Hey, what's good, y'all? It's your boy, who is Raphael LaRoe, your resident rapping VTuber here. And today we are about to be checking out Nightmare Time 2, Episode 3. Now, the last episode I absolutely loved. Perky's Buds and Abstinence Camp were possibly two of my favorite stories from all of Nightmare Time. They were just such a loving homage to both old school Stephen King style horror and to 80s and 90s slashers. They were just perfectly executed. The characters were fantastic and really drew you into the story. So I am really excited to see where we go from here. So without any further ado or any further build up, let's go ahead and get straight into Nightmare Time 2, Episode 3. <laughs> Oh, this is different. <laughs> I love that they brought him back for that. I wonder if that means they're going to be fleshing him out too. Because they've done that with a few people that we really, well, we, that I really didn't expect to see. Like, Zoe was barely a part of the guy who didn't like musicals and got a really, really good fleshed out story. I just don't know how they would flesh out somebody whose whole personality is being in a hurry. <laughs> I wonder if they're actually going to take it in that direction or if that was just kind of a fun little fun little cameo to put into the intro. I like the way that they're doing the title cards like the daddy with the cracks in it that's that's really cool like visually they're really just doing their thing ah we're getting more of uh what's his name sherman i think it was sherman i'm gonna be real this might be a hot take, but Sherman was honestly my least favorite part of Black Friday. Not really anything against, what is it, Jamie Lynn Beatty, I think? Nothing against her as an actor, but it's a very specific thing that has always just been kind of an issue on my end where I've always just taken pause with the cartoonishly over the top depiction of a nerd like it, it feels very I, I feel like the hail satan on scrabble was a very big uh foreshadowing oh yeah we got the, <laughs> the pentagram on, on david 
But yeah, I feel like it, it's a very like 1950s idea of a nerd or a geek. And it comes across to me as just very forced and grating. Which I understand, like, for this character, it's supposed to be very grating. Also, might be another hot take, but I'm kind of not digging this song. It's not a bad song, it's just not hitting the way the other songs in Nightmare Time have hit for me so far. I don't know if it might just be Jeff Blim not quite fitting the song like his voice not quite fitting it or if it's just the song itself that's not hitting for me but all of that said I, I am not trying to go into this with negativity because like I mentioned before with, with Zoe like they took a character that I just could not care less about and made possibly one of the most compelling stories for her by turning her into a foil for Linda so I definitely have faith that this is going to be a great episode still because Nightmare Time has not missed at all for me but I just kind of had to get it out the way that I'm not really a fan of Sherman at all in the slightest <laughs> watch this turn around and end up being like my favorite episode <laughs> Okay, the the bow tie in the bathtub is kind of doing it for me. That that's that's actually a really good little visual gag. <laughs> that's so stupid. <laughs> I love the little the little pencil chest hair too. The little the little pencil drawn taco meat. That's that's a good addition. That, that was an interesting ending. Excuse me. So is Sherman like got some kind of ties to the Lords in Black that we don't know about? Okay, that's dope. I mean, it makes sense if we're if we're doing a Sherman episode that we would be we would be revisiting Frank and Lex, which is great because I absolutely loved both of their characters and wanted so much more of them after Black Friday. He grabs the sheet of paper Lex has been scribbling away at. His heart sinks from the season. A job application? <laughs> Lex, I, I mean, you me Honestly, I've been there so many times, just at work filling out applications for a new job. I'm not leaving. I just, I need a second job because someone keeps cutting my hours. If you get a second job, how are you supposed to come in here and give 110%? Mm. Not in I hate that mentality so much in management. Dreaming about it. If, like, the, the idea that, that if you have on. anything else going on in your life, you're not giving 100 to uh, to the job. But then they ignore the fact that if they paid you better and treated you better, you would be more willing to give 100% to the job. me or you, it's just... Why would anyone come all the way to the mall when they could just order the same shit off of Amazon? Sadly, that's very real. I can see you're thinking it. I know a lot of business owners who have stores in the mall and it's struggling. Like, they're still doing decent, but the mall as a whole ain't really pulling in people like it did back in the day. Hey, you want me to pick you up an application for Best Buy? <laughs> Petty as fuck. Mm. Childish. <laughs> I love it. That night, Frank closes up shop alone. His footsteps echo through the deserted halls of Lakeside Mall. Store windows bear signs reading closed or out of business. Or yeah. Liquidation Luckily, the mall here in my hometown where my friends have their stores has been doing a lot to try to pull people back in. They throw a lot of events like anime conventions or 
free pet adoption days at the cat cafe or different things like that so that's really been bringing people back into the mall but yeah it is a far cry from what it used to be in the 90s and early 2000s the envelope labeled warning final notice he removes a large dog bone from one of his shopping bags smiles and slaps his leg hey buddy daddy's home <sighs> I tell you, buddy, the day I had... <laughs> but the dog doesn't come oh you better not i will flip buddy. this whole damn table <laughs> That's a low blow. We we're not playing with the we're not playing with the dog like that. Lying motionless on the floor. Y'all ain't shit. Two days later, at the Hatchetfield Animal Hospital, a veterinary technician hands Frank a can filled with mm, Not fair. Y'all are playing dirty. They said we are going to make sure y'all feel for him. <laughs> And he was a rescue. That's that's not even a little bit fair. They really came in and said, first five minutes, we are going to hit you with the gut punch and make you feel sad for this greedy asshole. <laughs> Damn. He looks so crushed, too. He's devastated. Records and Frank's personal favorite, a huge glass cabinet of vintage toys. He admires a miniature lime green. That's cool. That makes sense that that would be a spot that he would want to hang out at. It's funny, my brother actually has been working on opening up something very similar with his barber shop. Just all 90s themed with a whole bunch of 90s video games and. The owner of uh, toys and all kinds of stuff. Smiling and wiping her hands on her apron. Wow, you sure know your toys. That I do, Miss Holloway. <laughs> hey, Frank. Well, it be the usual. No, I'm, I'm fine. I was just in the neighborhood. I wonder if in this universe she's still dealing with like all the supernatural yeah. stuff. Or if in this universe she's just owning this little, Silverware clinks. this the little spot. From Frank as he finishes a slice of cherry pie. On the TV in the corner. I love the fact that he has this place, because especially now that he's like at such a low spot after losing his dog and he's gonna be losing his business and all of that. Having a friend who has a similar interest and in having that connection. <laughs> Those toy names sound so real too. Reminds me of Street Sharks. Look at the way he's lighting up talking about it too. I know that now. But when they died, I was more interested in proving them wrong. They left me some money, so I bought toys. Mm. On July 1st, 1996, when the doors opened, it was my store. Happiest day of my life. Yeah, that is such a beautiful feeling, honestly. It all went down here from there. I heard Lakeside was in trouble. Is it really that bad? No one's coming up? Well, someone is. <laughs> I feel like that would be the only thing worse than having no business. Just having business with somebody who clearly just annoys you. Loyal customer. Come on in, Sherman. The man rushes in, throwing up his arms. At last, the pearly gates have opened. Huzzah! From behind the counter, Frank takes out a cardboard box. They came in this morning. You're lucky, Sherman. You beat the rush. I expect these little guys to fly. <laughs> He's a hell of a salesman, honestly. Straight from the gun drop forest, swooping down from the sweet top tree, it's the sugar gliders. Wave four, baby. 
From the box, Frank whips out a collection of adorable, brightly colored figures. Shuggy! Frank presents each of the toys with a showman's flourish. We got the heroic Rainbow Hot, the playful Skip Doodle, and that grumpy old curmudgeon, Foggy Tail. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the good stuff. <laughs> oh, it is so hard to pick. People talk about the big decisions in life, and this is one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, as somebody who's collected, I kind of feel that, like, having to try to figure out what you're going to choose. That's dope. I know they did that with, uh, I think it was Abstinence Camp that they, that, what's his name, um, Nick was kind of playing dual roles, like, if they pre-recorded it. Which I think is really cool that they're starting to do now for their, for Nightmare Time. Well, I, I guess it makes sense to have Jamie. <laughs> His face. Yeah, like it makes sense having having Jamie playing both the parent and I guess child, if you can call it that. It looks middle aged. <laughs> yeah, she's a milf. Sir, don't, don't. You shouldn't say that about your own mom. Yeah, don't be weird about it, Sherman. Mr. Price, are you attracted to my mother? Please don't make it weirder. Please, please, pretty please. I don't know what age that is, but... Mm. Just imagine... If you two ended up together... <laughs> yeah, that would make you Mr. Price. Mm. That would make you... My daddy. No, I don't... I don't like the way you said that. That'd be fun, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. Great, great line delivery, but also She's I hate it. <laughs> She's loaded. Loaded? Yeah. Why do you think I afford all these toys? We're working on curbing my spending habits. But just look at these shuggies. <laughs> Frank Presley smiles, putting on that salesman charm. Yeah, he heard all he needed to hear. He heard you don't gotta pick. You can't pick up the sugar gliders. They're a team. No, a family. I'm atop the sweet top. The sugars go gliding. Oh yeah, he is a great salesman. He knows exactly what to do to make Sherman just fall straight into it. I don't like that phrasing. Skin flaps of love sounds like it should have been an abstinence camp. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry I shouldn't have said that. That's all the dolls in wave four. The sugar mobile and the sugar doctor. The sweet top. Let's go, Frank. Upsell that shit. Your total comes to three hundred and ninety-seven dollars. That's actually still pretty low for all of that. That's not too bad. You Don't shame me. I could never say no to that face. She takes out her wallet while Sherman snatches up the toys and runs from the store. Hey, if you got the money and it makes you happy, why not? 
Exactly. She hands him a stack of bills. Oops, uh, it's only 400 you gave me extra. Mm -hmm. Consider it. But this isn't really that kind of place. Well, then you simply must let me have you for dinner. Friday at 7 o'clock. I, I was going to say he needs to shoot his shot, but shit, she done shot it for him. Sherman talks about you all the time. He's surprising, me, surprising. In Pinebrook? I'd say go for it, but at the same time, she raised Sherman, so that's already kind of a red flag, because you would have to live with Sherman being part of your life. <laughs> I don't know if having a sugar mama is worth all of that. Hi, uh, Frank Pricey, I'm here for dinner. The intercom crackles and the gate screeches open. Frank guides his car through the estate's winding drive. Oh, that is a beautiful castle. You know, I've legitimately always wanted to buy a castle. <laughs> like, since I was six. <laughs> that's still on, that's still on my bucket list. Is it? Don't tell me she's finna nutty professor us and play every role. <laughs> That's actually really dope. You know they rich when they got their own lurch. But he looks like Solomon Grundy. I would immediately be unsettled. <laughs> that little bit of expression on his face was terrifying. Welcome to my home. At an ornate dining table, Frank chews a piece of mouth-watering steak. Mm. You are some cook, Mrs. Young. Please, Frank. Call me Sheila. After dinner, Sherman throws open a set of large double doors. Ta -da! He flips the light switch to illuminate a cavernous room with rows upon rows of glass cases. Inside is the most extensive array of toys Frank Chrysler has ever seen. Honestly, I feel that reaction so much. When I was about 16, 17, I worked at a record store, and my boss had the biggest collection of Prince merch and just all kinds of stuff that I have ever seen even to this date. Like the entire room in his house was nothing but Prince concert merch, t-shirts, uh, rare records, he even had those weird instrumental jazz albums that Prince put out that weren't even under his name. Like, crazy, crazy collection. And I was just shook seeing it. You know what they say, growing old is mandatory, but growing up. Yes, absolute fact. Ew. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was an awful thing to say though. Yeah. Mother says she spoils the family. Right? Yeah, that that disconnect from reality would have immediately made me just want to dip. Like I know you seeing dollar signs and you really need the money, Frank, but the red flags are just waving. They they're not even flags at this point. They're banners. <laughs> like Ooh. I'm sorry. Was he sick? No, no, no. He was murdered. Good. You can't just brush past he was murdered like that. 
Okay, yeah, she 100% murdered that man. <laughs> she. <laughs> I am. I know I keep accusing people in Nightmare Time of being serial killers, but yeah, she a killer. <laughs> She's. She definitely killed her husband. Oh yeah, she a black widow. She finna kill him. <laughs> she gonna marry him and kill him. I don't even know what she gets out of it, but she's gonna do it. Maybe that's where they get all their money from. Not like some life insurance scam BS, but like in the intro song, Sherman's toys turn into the Lords in Black. So they gotta have some connection with the Lords in Black. So what if she's marrying random dudes that are desperate and then like sacrificing them and that's how she's keeping her wealth yeah you gotta run Frank <laughs> I, mean, it sounds, I can't even lie though in this economy I'd probably take the risk and accept it anyway either yeah, times are tough out here <laughs> be like you gotta spend the rest of your life with Sherman later, and young decked out in a, a most likely black dirt, widow murdering people, bed. but so yeah, the, the other side is Frank money. Is <laughs> you might have to, you might have to take the risk. I can't even blame Frank at this point. Yeah, getting to keep his store and possibly even improve it. When that's his whole passion, like, I feel it. She let Sheila offer to buy me a recording studio. I'm, I'm signing those marriage papers, too. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of weird, Frank. I don't, I don't like the way he's immediately switching up. I scraped and saved for every toy I bought. Sherman is spoiled. Later, Frank yeah, that the asshole nature is coming right back out of Frank now. It's crazy how fast he switched up. Now that you're rich, can I get a raise? Raise? What happened to your promising career at Best Buy? All the positions are filled. Your dazzling resume didn't catch their eye. Okay, forget it. Don't be a dick, dude. I believe people get what they deserve. So. I will give you that raise, Alexandra, when you prove to me that you deserve it. Hmm. Whatever. Yeah, he's just being he the worst. Up. Frank smiles. I'm a disciplined guy. The next day, Frank descends the grand staircase of his new home to find the whole place filled with balloons and streamers. He scratches his head. Huh? In the kitchen, Sherman sits at the breakfast table. Sheila sets out another bundle of balloons as Frank walks in. Good morning, Daddy. <laughs> He's so creepy. <laughs> the decor. We're celebrating. It's Sherman's birthday this month. This month? Oh yeah, that's beyond spoiled. And then again, I know plenty of plenty of people who be turning up for their birthday the whole month, so I can't even hate on that. I'd be forgetting my own birthday, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know nothing about that, but. Marshmallow charms. 
Yeah, Frank is starting to Frank is starting to kind of get on my nerves. Like I know he's an asshole, but the way he's switching and trying to like flex his authority as a father to this grown ass man is weird. Like even as somebody who doesn't like Sherman, I I'm not really feeling the way he's treating Sherman. Don't you think it's our job as parents to prepare Sherman to survive on his own? There's, there's going to be a day when we're both grown. I'm not going anywhere. Now, give me some That feels like it had more meaning to it. Nah, I'm not going anywhere. Is this a joke? That. I'm glad you agree because that is a bowl of sugar and you're kind of getting up there, pal. <laughs> Frank, you don't just give it to us right out of the box. What should I have done, Sheila? You can't eat the crunching pieces. You mean the cereal? <laughs> <laughs> you need the okay, that's a little bit weird. That That is, that's going over the line but also y'all didn't tell him that he needs to eat cereal in a special way are you serious like how are you gonna tell him to give him cereal and then get mad when he gives him cereal also as much money as y'all got y'all don't just buy the bags of marshmallows that's just unnecessary you can get them on ebay for like Three some. After 20 minutes of rummaging through cereal, removing crunchy pieces, Frank plops a bowl in front of Sherman. Thank you, Daddy. Sherman begins scarfing it down. Sheila runs a hand down Frank's back, nuzzling her head against his shoulder. That's all Sherman can eat all the garbage he wants, and when his body falls apart, you got plenty of money to fix it. I mean, yeah, that is how a lot of rich people that I've been around kind of see things. <laughs> they eat like trash and then don't take care of themselves because when they need it, when they need it, they got the money for the medical bills. He collapses to the floor, writhing and screaming. Sir, off of cereal? How weak are your teeth? At that point, just get them pulled out and get some dentures, bro. Come on, Frank. You left in one of the hard pieces. What have you done? Hours later, Sheila and Frank stand in the waiting room of St. Damien's Hospital. Yeah, at that point, when they went to the hospital, I would have ran. You have so many opportunities to get out of this situation, my guy. It's only going to get worse. Ew. I see where Sherman gets it from. <laughs> Why are they in the pediatric wing? Later, Frank and Sheila wait outside the front entrance. That nurse was an idiot. Did you see the way she talked to me? I'm never coming back here again. Sheila, Sherman's fine. Oh yeah, she's she is crazy as hell. Again, Frank, run, bro. She is going to murder you tonight. <laughs> Doors slide open and Marco pushes out a wheelchair containing a pitiful looking Sherman. Sheila rushes to him. There he is, my brave boy. This is the worst birthday ever. Your birthday's in three weeks, Sherman. They put a strap on my arm and pumped it full of air. And it squeezed me so tight and I was so scared. I wanted to get out of there so I could see my. my. My mommy's here. Daddy. 
Sherman hops out of the chair and throws his arms around Frank. Sheila glares at her husband with white hot jealousy. Hmm. Later, the limousine pulls up. Sherman is gonna get him killed. Sherman has fallen asleep. <laughs> Sherman loving this dude is about to make her so jealous she about to murder him. Sheila watches, silently stooping. Marco opens the back door and picks up Sherman, careful not to wake him. Marco, here I am inside. <laughs> they go. Sheila lights a cigarette and rounds on her husband. I bet you just love that. What, I'm having a grown man drool all over my shirt? He only prefers you because I'm your father. The fact that she said she is the hard ass is crazy. <laughs> like, she has spoiled that man completely rotten. Literally, since his teeth are basically paper thin. Mm. Damn, she just threw him out like that. Sheila, come on. Open up. It's getting cold out here. Take it as a blessing, my guy. <sighs> Run. You know what? Fine. I'll get a hotel. Soaked and shivering, Frank trudges through the mud to the property's front gate. When he gets there, it's shut tight. How do you open this thing? Wow, so she's really just got him like locked in between the manor and the gate. So he's just actually stuck outside. That's messed up. He gets halfway up when his foot slips and he crashes back down to the mm. Oh damn, that's dangerous. God damn it. Later, Frank sits huddled beneath a tree, trying and failing to stay dry. He coughs and shudders. <laughs> I can't feel my hands. I, I can't feel my hands. Frank looks back to the mansion. He circles the perimeter, trying all the windows on the ground floor. They're locked and barred, every one. He looks up to a balcony on the third floor, Sherman's bedroom. He grabs a gutter and starts to climb. Inside, Sherman is awoken by the sound of knocking. He bolts up in bed. Peter Pan. Sherman rushes for the balcony doors. This dude he really said Peter Pan. <laughs> it took me a second to just have to process that. <laughs> it's just my dad. His his line delivery on that is so creepy. Every single time, Sherman is absolutely the creepiest character we've had. We don't know. Mother left you out there for a reason. Mm. She'd be pretty PO'd if I let you back in. Get the fuck out of me. Frank plows past Sherman. He storms down the hallway. Yeah, Frank is done with it. He's not here for the shenanigans anymore. <laughs> He's about to just... He does. Sheila appears in the He's about to just break it all off. And honestly, it's about time. What do you think you're doing inside? Packing. Frank opens a drawer and grabs his car keys. Suitcase in hand, he heads downstairs. You think I'm gonna stay here after a stunt like that? I could have died of hypothermia. Now, now who's overreacting, baby? 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 The baby is that 40 year old man <laughs> who dressed in funny pajamas. I mean, yeah, fair points. He's just unloading the clip. He's letting it all off his chest. Uh, I feel like, yeah, that's pretty accurate. And we're going to see it in a little bit. Hmm. Don't start talking too much, man. 
toy zones gonna be bigger and better than ever. Yeah, you, you're doing too much now. You should have just left. Now he's giving her motive to kill him. I like the sound of that. <laughs> Sherman watches the fight from the sidelines. Frank turns on his heels and heads for the door. See you around, Sheila. My future ex-wife. This partnership is over. Wait for me, Daddy. I'll get my things. You're not coming with me, Sherman. You're weird. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Okay, now you're just being extra. Like, yeah, Sherman is weird. We all know that. But threatening to take one of Sherman's prized collectibles is kind of wild. She grabs hold of a lever on the wall and pulls it. Suddenly. The floor beneath Frank gives way as a trap. See, I knew it. Lies. There was going to be something. Frank slides down a slide. I've low key always wanted to step on a trap door that had like a slide going down into a dungeon. Like, Scooby Doo just made that look so much fun. <laughs> That's another thing on the bucket list. I want to step on a trap door once in my life and just have it collapse under me. Panic. <laughs> Frank finds himself in some sort of ancient catacombs beneath the house. Oh, it's not even like a dungeon. A catacomb, so it's got to be big. furry shapes paddle through the water. Rats! Oh, God! Oh, good God! A voice echoes down into the subterranean hell. Goodbye, Dad! Mm. The trap door closes, and Frank is left down there, in the dark. Sherman comes to his mother, sheepishly. He was a bad daddy, wasn't he? Yes, baby. Just like all the others. Marco! The huge, gaunt man appears from the shadows. Frank Chrysler used to disappear. Is he good? Yeah, see, I knew she's just killing people, man. That's crazy. Underground, Frank finds a ledge and pulls himself out of the water. He can just barely make out the shape of a long stone hallway. Oh, oh no. Oh no, this can't be happening. It's a nightmare. It's, it's a nightmare. Click. Clock. Frank hears shambling footsteps in the dark. Hello? Who's there? Hello? Suddenly, a figure rushes out, grabbing hold of him. You have to get me out of here. Hey, yo. I'm in a hurry. They actually did bring him in. <laughs> I was, I was low-key starting to think that it was just a cameo in the intro. I'm down here for it. Barry Swift. Okay. I, I low-key love that his first name is The Flash's first name. <laughs> yeah, I think it's infected. I have to get to a doctor. Quick. Frank looks down to see that the explains why the he's in, in a hurry. Why he's in such a hurry. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's, it's hella infected. It's all right, Barry. Yeah, well, you, you, you might just Frank lose that leg, bro. He rips off his jacket, bundles it, and lays it beneath Barry's head. Stay here. I'll try to find a way out. Thank you. At least. <laughs> I love that they're still keeping the bit going even with giving these like very dramatic stakes oh they're in the sewers under the island so that is a lot of room to just be trapped down there that's a lot of like there's a lot of ways to just be lost if you're in the sewers underneath the city Damn it! Damn it! He goes limp. He hangs from the bars in utter despair. There's no way out there. No way. <laughs> Two weeks later, Sheila Young admires her reflection in a full-length mirror. She wears a yellow sequin cocktail dress. 
Tonight is the Hatchetfield Honey Festival, and she plans on turning some heads. She marches for the front door. Sherman here. I'm going out. I've grieved long and hard, but now it's time to find you a new dad. Oh, boy. Can, can we stop by Toy Zone on the way home? It's been two weeks, and I'm frozen. It's crazy. He's been down there for two weeks. I beg to differ. <laughs> Sherman is really not grasping that Frank is in the dungeon or in the sores. Oh, well, yeah, dungeon. <laughs> just pay someone to let me in. I mean, yeah, facts. Yeah, for a lot of collectors, that's not. It's not about getting the actual item. It's the yeah, the experience. Experience online. Yeah, there's there's something special about going into that environment and seeing all of those collectibles in person and being able to feel them and then making your purchase. Like it's a very unique experience. Yeah, after two weeks being down there with that infection, he, he ain't about to make it. Yeah, probably, honestly. We're getting out of here somehow. You don't want to miss the honey festival, do you? It's happening soon. I did see that this whole season is all taking place in the same timeline, which I think is so fascinating. She always told me to slow down. Stop and smell the roses. Wow. ears perk up. He hears footsteps descending the staircase. Someone's coming. That's actually really smart. You hear that? You have to get For the the emotional crux of his backstory that he in his final moments kind of wishes that he had slowed down. The dungeon door creeps That's open. pretty brilliant. A That's actually really brilliant writing. Light from his because they kept his character as that singular joke that he was, but yeah, still was managed to add a little bit of depth into it. Like that was that was a masterful Sorry? show of writing skill. Is that you? <laughs> He's oh, trying it. <laughs> the way that he kind of mimicked the delivery. Mother's going to have to find a new one. But you know, I'm starting to think. I don't think she cares about getting me a daddy. And she just wants a big old shot of vitamin D. Don't be weird about it, Sherman. She told me to shop online like a fucking millennial. <laughs> <laughs> kind of almost forgot the Sherman's middle age for a second. Going to the toy store. Things it's about the weight of the pack 
packages in your hands. Like exactly. The smell of a fresh plastic. I know. So, it's like you are going to tell me that they ain't a toys up. Sherman, that's, that's impossible. I, I have a state-of-the-art security system. I, I need to scan my finger to unlock it. Okay. I'll take the finger. Which one? <laughs> uh, what about, what about Zero security? hesitation in that. They won't let anyone in but me. Now, if, if you let me out, I'll take you to Toy Zone. We can go together. Who's going to stop you from running? You tried to leave before. Weird. Yeah, yeah. You are. <laughs> Just like me. No one understands you like, like I do, Sherman. He is flexing those salesman skills like a pro. You can let me out and, and we can go to the toy store or or you can let me die down here. It's it's your choice. The only thing you can do. Oh, he is playing up those issues. After a moment, his lip quivers, and he throws Yeah, Frank is low-key brilliant. Oh, Daddy! Frank holds head in his back gently. And while he silently commends himself for being one goddamn hell of a salesman, yeah. Frank removes the key ring from Sherman's pocket. Smart. Okay. <clears throat> I'll talk to my mother. I'll tell her you're the only daddy I want. Toys on. Sherman races from the dungeon and scampers up the stairs. Yeah, you gotta waste no time. Take off running before he gets to his mom. Barry, I got him. I got the keys. We can unlock the gate to the sewers. We're getting out of here, Barry. Barry? Barry? Frank shakes him again. No response. He checks for a pulse and doesn't find it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you gotta just leave him, man. It it sucks. I know you were down there for two weeks with him. Y'all had that little bit of time to bond and connect, but yeah, that's the worst move you can make because he's gonna slow you down and you cannot afford to waste time, Frank. That is a gorgeous dress. The gentleman caller. Ted Spankowski follows her inside. <laughs> of course, it's basket. Ted. <laughs> Naturally. Now, mother, you will not bring another man into this house. You are a man. Hey, it works for me. <laughs> <laughs> Because you're feeling frisky. <laughs> Don't sass your mother or I'll kick your ass, old man. <laughs> Fred is dead. But if you don't patch things up with Frank, I'll run away again. I love that Ted called him old man. Snacks. He rests it on his shoulder, standing his ground. Sheila sees his determined face. A face she never learned to say no to. Having no more use for her date, she removes a pistol from her purse and points it at him. Oh, See, no! I knew it. I knew it wasn't just trap shoulder. doors. And she's a bad shot, though. How are you just going to shoot his shoulder? She shoots three more rounds. One enters his stomach, one his nuts, and one his head. Okay, Ted didn't deserve all of that. I mean, yeah, he threatened to kick her son's ass in front of her. But still. 
You don't shoot a guy in the nuts. That's just that's just uncalled for. Ted's legs and drags him away. Sheila steps over the trail of blood and takes her son's face in her hands. Maybe I do swore. Just because you and I are the only two people that matter. Everyone else is a lifestyle for us. You'll understand. So, you mean the gift? Are you finally going to give it to me, Mother? Not this year. Let's go and have a word with your Sherman and Sheila descend the staircase to the dungeon. They follow the muddy trail of footprints to the dank corner where Frank and Barry have been living for the past two weeks. They find some rags and an empty food tray. But the men are gone. Frank! Sheila shines her lantern down a nearby passageway. Nothing. Then she notices the look on her son's face. He frantically checks his pockets. Only now does Sherman realize his keys are missing. Damn it. You let him escape? Deep inside the maze of tunnels, Frank trudges through the muck. He carries Barry on his back, making his way to the barred door, the gate to the sewers, to freedom. We're almost there, Barry. Hang on. He hears a voice echo in the distance. Marco! The gaunt giant appears at Sheila's side. A javelin in hand. Find him. Marco takes off with inhuman speed. Frank turns back as the sound of yeah. Marcus see, this is exactly why you should have just oh. Frank left Barry the there and not more than fifty. He made a run for it. But he's moving too slowly. He knows Marco will catch him. He needs to lighten his load. <sighs> I'm sorry, Barry. Fighting tears, Frank drops Barry's corpse. It plops into the water and sinks beneath the stinking coffin. Hmm. Frank bolts for the gate. He slams into it and tears the key ring from his pocket. He fumbles with the padlock, trying the first key. Marco rounds the corner, spots Frank, and wails. <laughs> the giant cuts through the water. He raises the javelin. Frank tries the second key, the third, the fourth. I'm sorry, Barry. I'm sorry, buddy. I'm sorry, Lex. Oh, God, I'm, I'm so sorry. The padlock clanks open. Frank rips the chain and throws open the gate. Whoosh! Something flies past his head. Blood spills into his left eye. Mm. The javelin Marco threw grazed his temple. A split second later, the Colossus plows into Frank. I like the that they brought back him being a javelin thrower. Splashes into the suit. Like that one little one-off line at the beginning when they introduced him. And then it kind of explains how athletic he is too. Boom, boom. Boom. Then, by chance, or fate, or whatever force is protecting Frank Chrysler, he feels a smooth wooden half beneath the water. The javelin. Frank grabs it and thrusts it forward. The giant barrels into it, impaling himself on the end of the spear. Mm. Black blood oozes from his chest. He grits his teeth and steps closer, ignoring the javelin, driving it further into himself. Mm. He wraps his hands around Frank's neck and starts to choke. Desperate, Frank pulls the javelin from Marco's body and jams it through the giant's eye into his brain. Damn. I mean, that is one way to get him, though. Like, he's clearly outmatched trying to fight him hand to hand. So, that is probably the only way Frank could have won. But stops when it hears the click of a cocky pistol. Sheila Young steps out from the door. Going somewhere? Sheila, please. Look what you did to Marco. She kicks the butler's mammoth corpse. Oh. Please. Hmm. Yeah, so he is like a little I'm not gonna kill you, Frank. Solomon I'm Grundy lose. type thing. In a vast black room in the west wing of the mansion, Sheila secures Frank's restraints. Lies bound to a marble altar. My first husband, Sherman's father, was a great and powerful. He was the first gay queen of the king who showed me the power of the black woman. His life was cut short by those disgusting inbred hats. 
So everything is coming back to the Hatchetman. Sheila opens a granite box and removes a handful That's of That's pretty crazy. So the Hatchetman came in and killed all of the people who were essentially like, I guess, worshipping the Lords in Black. So that's what it is. I, I thought that she was like sacrificing people for the wealth or whatever, but so she's stealing their life force. Yeah, so 1920s. Yeah, so she's luring the men in there, and she is the Black Widow essentially, but she's marrying them and then sacrificing them to steal their life. That's actually really interesting. That's pretty cool. Sheila lifts her hands into the air. On the ceiling is a painted mirror, depicting a twisted horde of nightmare things. Mm. She reaches toward them, worshiping, covering. I invoke the names Bukovna, Blicklotin, Tenoi, Karatsis. Frank feels the energy in the room shift, like the atoms in the air are being charged. Yeah. So the they. on the ceiling begins to change. Frank they got their ability from the Lords in Black. With some unknown sense, a thousand eyes open and roll in his direction. A creature with a goat's head screams with laughter. Sheila continues. Nibble and Ephraim, we gog here off. At the name, the room quakes. Shadowy tentacles slither to life on the mural above. What's happening? And now? Sheila flips through her manuscript, this collection of esoteric spells. She finds the page she's looking for and freezes. What the fuck? Sherman, get your little ass in here. <laughs> From the door, <doorway>, the <laughs> mood switch. So yes, mother. It was so sudden. She holds up the pages. Scribbled that that on delivery on the what the fuck was great. Drawing of smiling, fanciful Yo, he drew on great. the incantations. That soggy tail. <laughs> Do you have any idea what you've done? I needed those words and you covered them with bad drawings of those fucking squirrels. Don't yell at me, you idiot. You've stain mm. on the family name. You've killed us all. Damn, a stain on the family name. Mm. I mean, fair point. You've had what? You've had a hundred years? You kind of should have memorized them by now. He really just 4D chest her, too. There's only one place the is now. Mm. Let me find out Sherman's actually an evil genius. Sherman advances on his mother. She steps back, realizing she said too much. Yeah. Realizing the drawing was a trap, a test of her love, a test she failed. Sherman, dear, a stain on the family name? I only suspected that's what you really thought of me, and now... Never gave me the gift because you power over me. Mm. You let me get old. Fair point. That is pretty messed up. And she had this whole immortality thing and she stayed looking young, but let him become middle aged. Happy birthday to me. Sherman, please. I'm your mother. Sherman raises his hands into the air and chants. Mm. Sherman, no. Got 
The nightmare creatures in the mural roar with delight. The room trembles. Electricity flies through the air. <laughs> Sheila howls in pain as her flesh writhes and tears. Her hair turns white. Her eyes and tongue rot in their skull. Ooh. Her stomach splits and her guts shoot out. The description is crazy. And just the glee in his face while he's watching this happen to his mother is terrifying. Yeah, I feel you, Frank. Frank opens his eyes. A mist hangs in the air. A voice rings out. Small, high pitched. Young. They say growing old is mandatory. Well, wait till they get a load of me. Emerging from the ethereal smoke is a child. Wow. More than seven. He has a lot of curly hair, rosy, purple cheeks. Only his Low key, he looks like a ventriloquist dummy like that right now. Oh, he is going to be stuck having to raise Sherman. That, that is hell. Mm. Oh, that threat. Yeah, this is reminding me of that Twilight Zone episode with the little kid that everybody had to be nice to. Or was it like he'll take you to the cornfield or something like that? Every day. Yeah, I'm gonna be real. Just absorb me, bro. <laughs> Having to raise Sherman and take care of him and all of that. Sounds so terrible. <laughs> okay, that was a much better episode than I had even expected it to be. I like that. That logo is so dope. Like, the broken record. That looks, that looks really cool. Guitar growls in overdrive. Amps wail with feedback. Electricity hums through the speakers. Yo, the lighting the in this B-roll is crazy. Downtown Next up at the Slaughter Pig. <laughs> Brad, the band's front name. That's no, actually a pretty dope name for a band, Needy Beast. Are you ready? I'm wondering if the whole slaughtered pig name for the venue has anything to do with the uh, with the pigs that they used in order to be a body in uh, Honey Queen. After the show, the band flops onto the green room's dirty old sofas. Thrash's girlfriend, Courtney, holds his arm. Where's that rock? I don't know why the voice just kind of got me. In the doorway, a lanky figure takes a drag from a cigarette. I'm afraid I have to agree with you. He blows a stream of smoke in the band's direction. Hey, dude. There's, like, no smoking back here. Wait a minute. Agree with what? You're sad. It was shit. Hmm. What? Fucking what? Kick his ass, Thrash. Thrash pries himself from the couch, getting right in the stranger's face. Hey, hey, what's the big deal? You said it yourself. There's a difference, dude. We don't know you. And you're back here saying all this shit, saying we're shit. You don't know me. Honestly, I'm yeah. Kill you. <laughs> oh, yeah, kill if you're gonna just be back yeah. there and, uh. Just do it. 
tearing down the band like that. Yeah, Buddy clearly has some issues. I said your set was shit. Now do it. Hmm. After all this talk, Thrash backs down. He crumples onto the couch. Shit, man. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Come on, guys. Let's go to Dillard's. <laughs> he heads for the door. And the yeah, that's a weird smoke. interaction Save for somebody that isn't even affiliated with the band. Like, they're clearly just looking for trouble at that point. I've been to a few shows where there were some people like that. All you, all you can really do is just call security, get them the hell up out of there, and keep the vibes moving. Fuck you then. You're not getting any fries. They stumble out, leaving Rose with the lanky stranger. Kale. His skinny jeans are ripped to shreds. His hair's so clearly he she's like just basically a bull time. running head first towards the red flags, which hey. unfortunately is very common. Hey. Like hey. you see that happen with with band members yeah. all the time, not not just with women, too. Like there are a lot of guys that I've seen that just run head first for the most glaring red flags at shows. So, but ready? honestly, it's one of those things you just kind of got to get out of your system, I guess. <laughs> that night, I feel like we all been there at one point or another. He's plugging a cord into his phone, hooking it up to the car's speakers. He pulls up an audio file. It's called The Killer Track. Yeah, isn't that off the False Lashes new EP? The False Lashes, are you serious? No, no, nobody knows who wrote it. Knows where it came from. So he just oh, it's, it's the ring, pretty much. The ring, but with very, very edgy music. <laughs> that explains why no one knows who wrote it. Seems like a shitty way of growing fan base. Is this is a fucking joke to you. They saw this girl before and they'll play again. They say it gets in your head, haunts you, breaks you, and then, uh, then it takes you. Of course, it said it on Reddit. What a stupid gimmick to get people to listen to your crappy single. Hey, hey, hey! Look, yeah, he's he's too edgy for me. <laughs> he is just like the king of edge lords. I'm not scared. Yeah. Prove it. He holds up his phone, readies his thumb. Rose lets go of the car door handle. She leans back, and Kale presses play on the killer track. A week later, an old station wagon pulls into the driveway of a cookie-cutter suburban home. Ding dong, the bell rings. Honestly, they're playing the hell out of Kale, though, because that character is insufferable. <laughs> Worker, so clearly Douglas they're doing a great job. AKA Duke steps inside. Of course. How's she doing? I don't know, Duke. I, I don't know what to think anymore. I know. Rose's mother, Beth, chimes in. It's those friends I love that the, the, they're bringing Duke back. I'm hoping that means Miss Holloway's Duke coming through too. To tune out Beth and Russ as they lead him down the hall to Rose's room. $12,000, Duke. How much damage she did all because she was rolling or popping mm. or tripping or it's not drugs Beth. well i don't know i've never done drugs in my life duke <laughs> I know, Beth. on the walls you can see the years of family portraits as rose gets older her makeup gets darker and her hair changes from blue to green to orange in her high school graduation photo she wears a spiky collar and doc martens Family is falling apart, Duke. You never should have bought her that goddamn guitar. Well, you took her to get pierced. Oh, is she in here? Duke knocks on the I love that they still seem like very supportive parents. Blood. They're just very worried because of recent actions. But it seems like they've been very supportive of Rose finding her identity. 
Duke closes the door on Russ and Beth, who continue to argue. Wow. They're a pain in the ass. He looks at the band posters covering the wall. He points to one he recognizes. Hey, it's all slashes. I'm a classic rock guy myself. Hey, Rose, I'm Duke. I work with families. So is it like hearing it nonstop? Because she's holding her head a lot. Like, I can understand how that would drive you mad if you're just hearing the song on a loop. Kind of reminds me of, I don't know if y'all are old enough to have seen that old uh, flash video on Newgrounds, Banana Phone. <laughs> but if you are, that's what this is reminding me of. It's a hella throwback, but it's a classic. No. You mind if I hang out for a while then? You wouldn't believe me even if I told you. You'd scream me for drugs or throw me in a padded cell, and that's not how I want to spend my last night on Earth. And I don't need help or a hotline or anything because nothing can stop it. Stop what? Song. The killer track. Everything he said would happen, happened. He started hearing it everywhere on the radio, the, the TV, from the goddamn speakers at the Charizard. I, I just, I just wanted to make it stop. But it won't. It's been a week. And so at 11.30 tonight, I'm warm for you. Your hair. Song's gonna kill me. Can't comply? No. It's crazy, man. See, I, I knew you wouldn't believe me. So if you wouldn't mind, Duke, fuck off. Uh, killer song. That is unbelievable. But I've been doing some digging. Hmm. Look at this. From his bag, Duke retrieves a folder. He opens it and spreads the contents. The so he, he kind of already had an idea of what she was dealing with. Like before coming in to talk to her. That's actually pretty dope. Aged 18 to 24, all in perfectly good health. I died 16 days ago, at the exact same time. They were in different places, doing different things, when their parts just stopped. A week prior, they had all attended a party where they claimed to have heard a song. That's song crazy. Haunted them. That's a hell of a way to go out, though. As like, lunches. somebody there just, you just happen to hear places. somebody playing the song at a party. And then a few days later, it just kills you. Like, yes. that's wild. But this is Hatchetfield. Yeah, honestly, a hell of a lot more dangerous than a videotape like The I Ring. Because <laughs> you can catch so many people who aren't even trying to, like, aren't even trying to hear it. That's crazy. The neon sign blazes hot pink. The place is packed with 80s memorabilia. Pop tunes ooze from a jukebox in the corner. The bell dings as the owner slides a plate of fries out from the kitchen. Order up! Miss Holloway spots Duke and Rose as they walk in. She smiles. Hi, you do. Hey, you darling. She pushes through the swinging saloon door to the back, wiping her hands on the apron of her electric blue uniform. Let me guess. You're Rose. Without the makeup, you're real spooky. I just got a close up. You want some pie? Rose watches this chipper woman pull two pieces of pie from a rotating display. Her hair is huge, her earrings dangle. Great. Well, I was in the hands. I love the fact that I didn't even oh. realize that the woman Later, with the 80s nostalgia that, uh, what's his name was. 
was just like bonding over 80s toys with was Miss Holloway. <laughs> I'm like over here wondering if she's going to show up and she already did. I mean, it makes sense that that would seem kind of whack just looking at it without knowing the crazy stuff that she can actually do. That's actually terrifying that she was able to do that just so casually with seemingly no effort. <laughs> I'm really interested in finding out like the extent of Miss Holloway's powers because from what it seems like she just has a wide list of abilities that she's able to just kind of cycle through It seemed like that kind of got under her skin a little bit. This is so dope. Just the fact that they actually illustrated all of this is crazy. And I know somebody is already selling <laughs> versions of this, so I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to look on Etsy or something because I know there's got to be a few, a few versions of that book. Pit. 
See, this is what I'm talking about with like her. I need like a list of Miss Holloway's abilities or something because <laughs> it seems like she could pretty much just do everything at this point. Like, that's really cool pushing Rose's consciousness out of her body like that. <laughs> hey, come on, don't give me shit after I took your ass to the bell. I hear see Miss Holloway finds a bag of happy Taco Bell. She lifts it and shakes her head. <laughs> She's so disappointed in her. <laughs> she drops the bag and wipes her hand on Rose's shirt. Yeah, he is such a damn redditor, man. <laughs> like, oh, fuck yeah. This is hard. Mmm. <laughs> I love how edgy these lyrics are. <laughs> it fits it fits Kale perfectly. <laughs> Yeah, this, these lyrics just scream, I'm 14 and edgy, like. Yeah, that was dope. It, it definitely felt very try hard, Edge Lord. But I feel like that is a conscious decision, just because it fits Kale's very try hard personality so well. <laughs> Stops. Thinks. 
She tries to recall what the pillar track even sounded like. <laughs> honestly that's real like if you watch any type of time travel shenanigans in a movies or tv you basically have to accept that you know a little bit of a paradox is bound to happen you just gotta roll with it hmm <laughs> But she heard it though, because she took her place. No. Yeah. Not at all. She just took. took she just took over what? it. Miss Holloway slides the pie in front of Rose. So that means it's gonna kill her now. I mess with time a little bit. I put myself into your body when the song is played, which means I heard it. I mean, yeah, that is pretty cool. <laughs> a look of concern walking over. But if you heard the killer track, then that, that would mean... Yes, sir. At 11.38, it's going to be double Later, Rose helps Miss Holloway carry an old TV into the back office for safekeeping. Okay. When the song attacks, I'm going to hear it coming from anything with a speaker, right? Yeah, and it's going to be loud. Like, front row at Slayer loud. Like, here, splittingly. Loud, I get it. You don't. You do anything to make it stop. Break anything. Instruments, electronics, phone. Yeah, see, this is kind of, again, reminding me of that old banana phone video. <laughs> just the fact that they heard it so loud and just in a non-stop loop until they went crazy. As Rose packs away the TV and the telephone, Miss Holloway unplugs the vintage... It's smart putting all of the, all of the devices, all of the electronics away to try and protect herself. Like, that's... I mean, it's, it's a really smart plan. I just want to make sure everything's safely locked away. After Rose's incident at Guitar Zone, I don't want to lose control and cause 12,000 bucks of damage to his face. You didn't tell me the whole plan. That you were going to take the curse onto yourself? Yes, if I did, you wouldn't have brought her here, would you? This song, whatever it is, it has killed over 30 people. That we know of. Exactly. That's why I have to stop it. Stop it? Yeah, <laughs> and there's got to be a lot that there's no way of even knowing that it killed them too what if you can't stop what what if it's a i don't know what a ghost or something if it's a ghost i'll trap it in this jar that's i mean okay cool you got a ghost jar that has whole other implications for what's kind of stuff goes on in Hatcherfield. There are things out there that are above my pay grade. But if something happens to me, I want you to leave this. Oh, she's waving the death flag right in his face. Don't breathe now. Only if something happens. Yep. She just... She is waving that death flag hard. If you really want to help me, I'll take those blankets and wrap up the jukebox. It was expensive, and if I break it, I'll be very upset. After they've locked everything away, Duke, Rose, and Miss Holloway sit, waiting for the killer track to make its move. The hot pink glow from the neon sign outside streams through the dark environment. Hit a pen. Hit a pen. Raindrops gently beat the window. Duke's knee bounces nervously. He checks his watch. Anything yet? No, not yet. Okay, well, uh, we 
got three minutes. So. Fine. So how's this gonna work? Uh, is the the song gonna come right in the dive uh, before, after? You know, what, what's what's the ETA? Duke. Clearly, none of us know. <laughs> we do know. All right. Yeah. I feel like tying her up would have been a smart move too. Like just in case it's not just electronics. Because if she'll do anything to stop it, like anybody around her would be in danger too. Like I don't see why they wouldn't tie her down just to be safe. As Duke speaks, his voice is replaced by the hellishly loud opening riff of the killer track. So it's anything that can produce audio. So it's coming from like his vocal cords. Oh, that's fucked up. But while the killer track thunders and thumps in Miss Hopploway's head, Duke and Rose can't hear it at all. I don't hear anything. What do we do? Why are you asking me? Miss Holloway flails. The song slamming her eardrums, pounding them, destroying them. It's agonizing, maddening. She looks up at Duke through tears and bloodshot eyes. She realizes where the sound is coming from. They locked up. Yeah, they it started coming out when he was talking. Speaker, but they didn't get rid of everything that can make music. The killer track echoes from Duke and Rose, from their voice boxes. Miss Holloway waves her arms. Don't worry. I'm not going anywhere. Mm. Smack. Miss Holloway hits Duke. He slams into the booth filled with artifacts. They scatter. He looks back as she yanks a stool from under the bar. Miss Holloway? What are you doing, darling? Pained and crazed, she drags the metal seat across the floor toward Duke. Rose's eyes go wide. When yeah, see, this is why I say you should have tied her up. <laughs> Miss Holloway lifts the stool above her head. With tears in her eyes, she takes aim at Duke's throat, the source of her torment. The need for reprieve grows too strong to fight. Miss Holloway prepares to strike. Duke's eyes dart to Rose. Mrs. Jordan. She will get it, Duke. She absolutely would. Duke winces, bracing himself. Miss Holloway struggles. With every mm. ounce of her will, the fact that she was able to fight it is crazy. Away from Duke. Because it seems like it such a the jukebox, just busting through the powerful it explodes urge. in a spray of electric sparks. The killer track booms in Miss Holloway's mind. Her head's about to split. She plugs her ears, squeezes her eyes shut. Then the song goes in for the kill. It fills Miss Holloway, it takes hold of her heart. She can see it, touch it. The noise stops. A moment of clarity. I understand. Then Miss Holloway's eyes go blank. She falls. See, I knew it. They were waving the death flag too much. So she figured out what it was, but crawls to his feet. Damn. That's crazy. Like it was, it, she figured it out, but it was too late. He runs to her, holds her. He's alive. Feels her go cold. Miss Holloway. <laughs> the next hour is a blur. The ambulance comes. The ambulance goes. See, I would I would have looked at that letter that she gave him because she gave him a letter saying like if it goes wrong, like she kind of expected it to go wrong. I understand like you tripping and and she just died in front of you, but that letter might have had some kind of something to help stop this thing. reaches for the door handle, then stops herself. She breathes, 
searching for the words. I'm so sorry. This is my fault. Yeah, for a teenager. This is some crazy trauma to have to go through. Like the pain of having heard the song, the pain of going through all of that, and then also you just saw the person who tried to help you die in front of your eyes, like all as a teen. Duke gets home after dropping Rose off. He tosses his keys into a bowl by the door. He wanders to the fridge to pour some milk for the cat. He falls into an armchair in the study, leans back, exhales. The feelings come in waves. Sadness. Anger. Yeah, that's, that's hitting him hard. And again, I mean, especially the fact that you saw it happen in front of you. The sealed envelope Miss Holloway gave her. Finally, turns it over looking at that hands. damn letter. <laughs> she opens it and takes out the note. It reads, Well, I guess I'm dead. <laughs> She's so casual about it. Mm. See, that's why I said you should have read it right away. Specifically, she specifically said, read it right after something happens to her. Then again, that's low key on her. She could have let him just read it then. Like, even if he was confused and had questions. <laughs> like, like, if you have instructions for immediately after something happens, you got to let them read it beforehand, not when they're distraught. <laughs> they step onto the elevator and the door is closed behind them. When they're gone, Duke emerges from his hiding spot in a darkened hallway. He checks to make sure no one's around and slips into the room. Miss Holloway's body lies on a metal slab beneath a white sheet. Duke swallows, reaches for the covering, and folds it down. Miss Holloway is still and pale and white. Duke starts questioning himself. What am I doing here? I must be out of my mind. He's about to pull the sheet back over Miss Holloway's face when her eyes burst open. <gasps> Miss Holloway pokes up, gasping for air. Duke falls back. So is she like just low key Quiet. immortal then? Knocks over a tray of operating tools. Color returns to Miss Holloway's chest. If she's able to die and then just a few hours later come back to life. Around. <laughs> you died. Yeah, and now the whole town knows that. Mm. It's great. Yeah, that does make you coming back to life a little more everything. complicated. Miss Holloway hops off the table. She grabs a lab coat and pulls it on. How? Duke stares in disbelief. As Miss Holloway plucks a hair from her head, she lays it onto the metal slab and rubs her hands together. 
She holds them over the white sheet and closes her eyes. Neon lights flash as the hair inflates beneath the cover. Soon, an identical copy of Miss Holloway's body mm. Bro, what the hell even is her power set at this point? <laughs> She's making whole ass body doubles. Duke's eyes lock on the lifeless decoy as the real Miss Holloway grabs his arm and pulls him from the morgue. Yeah, Duke is going through it tonight. The place is in shambles. In pre-dawn light, Miss Holloway looks down at the pieces of her shattered jukebox. Look what it made me do. It just had to be the jukebox. Now it's personal. She starts for the kitchen, turning back to Duke. I mean, you figure it was personal after it you know, killed you. Yes, I, do want I guess the jukebox is a good place to draw the line. I want the truth. Yes, we we deserve to know what the hell is up with her. Yes, I want all the exposition. <laughs> I feel like I need a full Miss Holloway play at this point. Yo, y'all ain't shit. <laughs> you really gonna do a, a damn time skip for her backstory? Look at your watch. He does. Ten thirty. Wasn't it just six? They really did just do a whole time skip. Look outside the window. The midday sun is high in the sky. That's not. Duke knows that two seconds ago it was Did she like hypnotize him instead of telling her actual backstory or something? You can't. You think this is the first time you've asked me about myself? I don't know how many That's a good point. Wow, that is horrible. Because at that point, you can't even like make meaningful connections with people because you can't share anything about your life, really. Because they immediately forget it. I want to know who she made that deal with. Because she got a little bit short when Rose mentioned the deal with the devil. But clearly, she made a deal with somebody, so it had to be one of the lords in black. I figured out what the song is. The song? The killer track. Keep up, Duke. When it killed me, we made contact. I touched it. For a brief instant, I understood it. It's not a curse or a ghost. It's alive. Hmm. A beam of sound and energy. Like so it's not Kale killing people with the song. So the song is alive and Kill is just like helping it or like it's Avatar or something. Mm. Isn't like the whole town at the Honey Festival? So the song plays, it's literally just wiping out all of Hatchetfield. Well, except for the uh, pageant contestants that Linda got rid of. 
Old girl stuck in the ocean is lucky. Mayor Solomon Lauder speaks into a microphone. His voice booms through the various loudspeakers lining the fair's perimeter. Good evening, Hatchet Field. This is Mayor Solomon Lauder, wishing you a very happy, honey festival. This year's celebration is bigger and better than ever. We have games, music, and after a flood of complaints, pedal boats are backed by popular demand. <laughs> what the hell is he doing? <laughs> He's having too much fun. And I trust you'll remember the man who gave it to you in the voting booth. This smooth game. campaign pitch. An assistant hands him a bottle of water. Yes, you always gotta be. You, know, you always gotta be in campaign mode. Ass looking and Broadway. That's mm. all it was. I can't believe I have to waste my breath. The, the switch up. The audio guy chimes in. Did you want me to cut the mic? He ain't shit. Damn. You can't tell me that wasn't purposeful. My, my got to sing in the honey I love that we're getting glimpses at the most like seemingly Ooh, insignificant like, yes, characters, yes, like so the roommate whose entire personality was just that she shits a lot. Mm. Oh damn! Make her feel like a worm. Oh, okay. Let me check. So she. Try to betray Zoe too. At the beer tent, a woman pays for her drink as Ted Spankowski leans on the bar beside her. I love that we're just getting everybody right now. <laughs> like, wow, that's that's so cringe. Hey, you don't have to be so rude. Poor guy. I mean, he's trash, but poor guy. Elsewhere, art school student Deb passes her phone and earbuds to her girlfriend who's home from New York for the summer. You gotta check out this song, Alice. It's killer. Nearby, Duke overhears this and pushes through the crowd. Hey, 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 stop right there. Do not play that. He rips Steph's phone from Alice's hand. I'm curious by the, I'm curious about the home from New York thing for the summer. Come on, dude, they're not that bad. Duke looks at the phone, embarrassed. Because I don't think there was any point where they insinuated that she, that Alice lived in New York, right? Am I tripping on that? Sorry, girl. <laughs> I love how he just made an ass out of himself. <laughs> Sorry. She's a killer, so I thought it would be my beat. Duke, I told you. Dude, the track's done playing small venues. It wants a bigger stage. At the end of the block, she spots the concert platform, where various musical acts have been and will be performing throughout the night. She has a notion and starts squeezing through the crowd. She calls to Duke. Let's split up. She points to the loudspeakers lining the street. Find whatever those are hooked up to. Duke nods and heads off in search of the audio tent as Miss Holloway makes her way toward the stage. Behind the stage, a technician calls out to a band who nervously await their turn to perform. All right, uh, Needy Beast, you guys are on in five. Hey, thrash shout out to them giving the good gig. <laughs> Even if was his name Thrash thought that they were kind of ass. His girlfriend, Courtney, runs his his nerves before playing and about playing remind me so much of this kid that I used to play with in high school. He played the bass and would like melt down and cry before every gig just because he was so nervous. And then he would just absolutely kick ass on stage and then be good once we got off. <laughs> As Thrash panics, Rose tunes her guitar nearby. Scud, the drummer, sees something and nudges her leg. Hey, Rose, isn't that the guy from the slaughter today? What? Scud points, and sure enough, there's Kale, hurriedly sneaking around the 
back of the vendor's business. He played you that song you were freaking out about, and he's fine. See? <laughs> Told you it was bullshit. Yeah, uh, he's not as spry for someone who should be dead. Rose sets down her guitar and heads off to follow Kale. Where are you going? We're on in five. Crash sees Rose leaving and cries. <laughs> Poor guy is going through it, man. He Moments later, he needs Gale to work on his his stage fright a little bit. The audio guy lies unconscious in the corner, his mm. head bloody from where Kale hit him. In the entryway, Rose appears. Hey, why are you still alive? Kale glances back. Did you ask the same of you, Rosary? He goes back to his work, hooking a cable into his phone. Connecting it to the festival sound system. You listen to the song this same time I did. But but don't don't tell me you you got a witch too. I'm stupid. <laughs> if the song killed everyone that listened to it, how would it spread? It needs a carrier. That's why it picked me. It wants to be heard. His phone lights up. I mean that makes Two sense. Yes, yeah, so I, I had a feeling that Kill was like the song's avatar or something. Choice. I don't even think that I'm human anymore. Mm. I don't know what I am. Uh, oh, I, That's actually pretty I scary. So the song didn't scared. just take over him, but it's like no, I was. almost I consuming him and his stop. humanity. I can't. Could you stop me? What? Mm. Stop me. Rose, that kind of reminds Please. me of him picking the fight with Thrash in the, in the green room when they met. Almost like desperately trying to be put in a situation where he can't share the song. He holds her at bay, stopping her from intervening. Outside the opening ramp of the pure track glares on the loudspeaker. Festival attendees cover their ears at the hellish noise. Ugh, what is that? In the crowd, Duke hears the song and freezes. Oh no. On the stage at the end of the street, Miss Holloway... How much of the song do you have to hear for it to kill you? Because, like, everybody just heard that beginning riff. <laughs> so are they already just fucked? Gets an idea. She runs over, grabs the instrument, and pulls the strap over her shoulder. I hope this works. I'm not too I like that they're bringing back that little offhanded comment that she used to play back in the day. <laughs> Have some confidence, bro. Miss Holloway slams down on the guitar strings, strumming out a chord that booms from the concert speakers, cutting through the killer track. Mingling with neon lights flood the stage, hot pink and electric blue. Without thinking, Needy Beast begins to play. Miss Holloway's magic flows through them, and they just know what to do. As notes drift, that's from crazy. The floor, so their song she's basically the doing that again, track. where she controls the people, kind of like how she controlled Miss Rose and made her eat the pie. The one that captures but she's making them play her song. That's kind of that's dope, but that's also terrifying that she's able to just easily take over people like that. Okay. Fitting her voice perfectly.
I gotta be real, I haven't even been paying attention to the lyrics, I'm just vibing. <laughs> This fits her voice so well, man. That's a really cute shot. Oh, I like that transition too. Oh yeah, that is a bop. Oh my god, that's such a good song. song rings out over the crowd. They're about to cheer when they stop, confused. The memory of the song is suddenly gone. The time they spent hearing it is to Wow. This piece of Miss Holloway's past is Yeah, so they forgot the everything. Like it never happened. So they forgot the song that, that they just heard. The deal. That's a smart way to right. to so resolve that problem. Along with Miss Holloway's song, so too goes the one it mingled with. The experience of listening to the killer track is taken from the crowd out as well. That time has vanished. They never heard it. They look around, bewildered, wondering what just happened. But the killer track nullified, and the festival goers say, Miss Holloway smiled. She turns to the band. That was radical, guys. Back in the audio They are so lost. Poor Thrash, man. He really needed that W and he can't even remember it. But he's also lost the past few years. He doesn't remember playing the killer trick. I gotta play the song. He starts for the soundboard. When Duke grabs him from behind. He pulls the lanky goon from the top of rows and punches him square in the jaw. Mm. Slamming onto the table, his phone falls, dangling from the cord that connects it to the festival sound system. He reaches for it, throws points. Duke, he's gonna play it! Before Kale can play the song again, Duke yanks the phone from the cord. He slams it on the table. The screen cracks. No! Duke slams the phone again and again. Crunch. Crunch. As it breaks, so does Kale. Mm. This shell of a man, taken and, and hollowed out by the killer track. Damn. The screen shatters, and Kale's body. Yeah, so it just it just consumed everything room. about him Kale and just left like a shell. Electricity. Mm. Shower of sparks, and he's gone. Rose watches, eyes wide. Rose and Duke are seeing some wild <laughs> shit. <laughs> they are seeing some crazy stuff, man. Fireworks light up the night sky. Duke and Miss Holloway watch them. Gently swing. That's cute. The honey festival really is a magical time. Yeah. Well, I'm in it in a bad way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's true. It almost makes you forget about all that. Well, I gotta say, feels good to be the hero for once. Oh, are you the hero? Yeah. You're usually the one that saves the day, but this time it was all Duke. The guy was about to play the song and got him with the old right hook. I don't usually come out of the but there comes a time. <laughs> okay, no, dude. Sounds very manly. Kind of feeling himself he now. He should have been there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what was I doing? So how do you explain your miraculous recovery? I don't think we will explain it. Miss Holloway had a good run. Hmm. That's tragic, honestly. Only good for about 15 years. Anyway, when people start to notice. Okay, so you pick a new name, change your hair. I'm not touching my hair. It's been like this since Vegas. 
I'm not going to pull anybody. People aren't going to forget what you look like. Actually, they will. And so will you. Damn. You'll remember Miss Holly. Poor guy, oh, man. Try, God. You know how I feel about you. Relax. Trying to say goodbye. That's Jonah? so tragic, man. This hallway leads closer. He closes his eyes. He kisses her. He opens his eyes, and she's gone. Suddenly. He can't remember why he's out here. On a paddle boat in the lake. Then a tiny boom in the sky. Oh yeah. He was watching the fireworks. Damn. Months pass. The old station wagon pulls into the parking lot. Yeah, that actually, that whole he scene kind of hit hard. Because it's tragic for floor. both. For Duke, because he's clearly in love with her, but also... To see a 1987 for her, just in the sense that she doesn't get to build those relationships. Duke's not sure why, but he finds himself drawn to her. That's some ride. The woman checks her makeup in the side mirror. Yeah, she's a classic. Some things never go out of style. Oh, no. Yeah, see, she has to act like she doesn't know anybody. So any little bit of a connection that she builds with people, she has to completely reset it. Like she said, like every 15 years or so. Teacher? Guidance counselor. Miss Holiday. This is a very... Significant change from Miss Holloway. <laughs> Very similar to a woman I used to know. She died. Oh, that's too bad. She grabs her bag and heads for the entrance. Well, you can't dwell on the past. Really? Is that a tape deck in there, Miss Retro? What can I say? I love the 80s. Yeah, like he's noticing how familiar she she seems. I mean, I'm I'm glad they're able to be close, but it's still super tragic. Hey, I feel seen. <laughs> I feel included now. Okay. A dope little take on the on the theme. That's dope that we finally actually get to hear Needy Beast. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, that's a good addition. That TikTok part is such a good addition to it. Which, holy shit, this is dope. Hey, 
<laughs> what is with the random accents that just get thrown in every once in a while? That's such a banger. Oh yeah, that's hard. Yo, so that was Nightmare Time 2, Episode 3. And oh my god, I absolutely had so much fun with this one. The storytelling and the world building with the entire Hatchetfield series has been just bananas. It's been crazy. And I really really have so much fun with these episodes like even when we're focusing on characters that I either don't really initially care for or with characters that I wouldn't ever think twice about we're still getting them fleshed out like Zoe's roommate getting just that tiny little additional detail that she actually was trying to sabotage Zoe as well or the guy who what is it the guy who's in a hurry getting that little fragment of 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 regret that he wishes he had slowed down like seeing this little bit of additional detail for side characters that honestly we didn't need fleshed out but the fact that we got them makes the world feel so much more lived in and feel so much more real and i absolutely just love this series and this episode was so much fun like normally like always please feel free to let me know any additional information anything that I didn't quite pick up on or that you think that I missed or was incorrect about please chop it up with me in the comments let's talk about it because this series is so much fun to talk about with you guys I appreciate the openness and communication that this fandom has like it's so dope and it is such a rare thing so i appreciate that from you guys so much talk to me about it let's discuss this episode let's discuss hatchetfield as a whole and yeah i really hope that y'all enjoyed this as much as i've been enjoying it and i hope that y'all have a wonderful evening Feeling the sky falling, clouds burn around our heads. Feeling the ground pouring as it melts beneath our legs. Feeling the lights rolling as we're hanging off the ledge. Feeling the night calling, hear the answers in our breath.